thank you so much for being with me today. And I have a few questions I want to ask you about your beginnings and your life as an activist. What events or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? Well, you know, in my youth, I lived in a very privileged bubble. I think what I got from my youth was the value system that primed me for activism. And, you know, that value system is, is about, I was constantly being told you have to be honest, you have to be a good person, you have to be helpful when you can be. These types of values, they were strictly in, enforced. You know, I had, you had to be polite. Your language had to not be as colorful as my language <laughs> might be now. <laughs> You know, I mean, essentially be a good, polite person, a caring person. I mean, these were the things that were ingrained in me when I was a child. But, you know, in my little bubble there, I, activism was not on my radar at all. It's such a terrible thing for our young people that they're faced with this. They're faced now with just the bald-faced, massive corruption of people, particularly a lot of people in power, people who are responsible for the well-being of this nation and its people, including these kids, uh, are constantly lying or engaging in malfeasance. And it's, it seems like a terrible, terrible world. But actually, if you look, an equal number of people, an equal number of angels, of people out there who are dealing with it. They're looking for accountability. They're going to the courts. They're spending their life energy getting to the bottom of things. They're engaging in activism. They're stepping up. And, you know, children in particular, young people, they have a particularly powerful voice. They're the hope. They're always the hope of the previous generation. People, especially now, I think, are more willing to listen to them and to support them in any kind of activism that they're inspired to engage in. I know I am. It's important that they speak up and they start speaking because this will be your generation's legacy. Your generation's legacy is early on, you know, when you were a kid, you cared and you stepped up and you did what your heart told you to do to call something out or act upon something. You know, you see these stories about these kids. I, there's one kid who was delivering food. I think it was like eight or nine and he was delivering food to, to his, his neighbors and people that he knew needed it. And I just thought that's so amazing that his parents must be special people too, to have inspired that in him. Youthful activism, is a wellspring of great hope. My grandmother just was the most honest, straight arrow person I've ever known. My mother as well. You know, they came from Ohio, you know, a family from the heartland of America. And we were living in Haiti under the uh, dictatorship of Papa Doc. And obviously in my privileged Bubble. This was not an oppressive thing for me because of my situation. My mother and my grandmother were always honest to me when I asked them questions about life, about how things were in the world. But I do still have to say, even by the time I got to college, I was pretty naive because I'd been pretty protected all my life. I did end up at Antioch College in Yellow Springs, Ohio, which was a, you know, activism. That's part of the curriculum in a way. So it was a great shock to me because I was always so obedient and I was a shy person and I was quite deferential to authority. It was a wonder to me. I arrived when students were demonstrating against tuition hikes that was making it harder for the poor students to stay there. They took over the classes. They went into the president's office. They did all these things that were just unimaginable to me. And I thought, oh my God, you can think something's wrong and actually take these steps to address it or make others address it. And, and that was a real epiphany for me. I came to my activism very late and only because 
something affected me deeply personally. I became a journalist and a journalist doesn't want to be called an activist because there's an implied bias there. And so I I didn't want to be called an activist, but I'll tell you, I was working at a network, CBS, and there was a very controversial plane crash that for about five minutes when it happened, I thought my son had been killed in that crash. And I experienced a grief that is indescribable. But at that moment, my grief connected me to the families of all those victims. And when I went to work the next day, I was assigned to look into this crash. And boy, did I want to get to the bottom of it. And in the course of trying to do that, I upset certain powers that be, uh, namely the FBI. I was let go by, from my job as a result. That shocked me. So I curled up into a little ball for a while. And then I came out and I said, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to expose this corruption in the press and in the government because these people, again, I was carrying that suffering of these victims' families. That was the moment that I really became an activist. And I, when I said to myself, I have to expose this corruption, I have to address the big wrongs in any way that I can, doing what I know how to do, which is journalism. And I did. I published those books and I've done documentaries and I've spoken out. And of course, my cootie factor went way up in the mainstream. (laughs) And that was hard to take for a while. And of course, you know, you make no money because nobody wants to hire you. But I wouldn't change my life for anything because in the end, when you do something that your heart tells you to do, it really gives you a sense of purpose in life and a sense of service, which I think everybody in the end wants to feel connected to everybody else. And service is the way you do it. It's an expression of love. So that's how I became an activist pretty late in the game. I was dragged into it. The boat of destiny came along and said, are you hopping on or, you know, are you just going to stay there and keep making your money and having a good time at that network? And uh, I said, okay, I'll hop on. That's why when I see seven, eight, 12 year olds, 15 year olds, 18, even college students, getting involved and getting active and trying to make their world a better place and trying to help people. I have to say, I feel a twinge of shame (laughs) that I was such a latecomer to the party. I wish I had had the inspiration and the generosity of spirit at that early age. What continues to give you courage and guide you? And I don't need motivation anymore. This is who I am. This is what I do. What guides me? Everything. The big everything. From the great vast cosmos to the undiscovered particle. We're all part of that. I think about that all the time. And and I feel like, okay, this is the row that I'm hoeing in this vast living thing. And, you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm in my proper skin. I, I know it. I don't need motivation anymore. I don't need the courage. You get the courage by going through things that scare you to death over and over and over. You lose your fear after that. And now, you know, I'm older than dirt. So I really am. (laughs) What advice do you have for young activists? I thought and thought and thought about this because I don't want to come off as, you know, lecturing or being bossy or whatever. But I came up with a list. The first thing I would tell them is follow your heart. Listen to your inner voice. If something tells you to stand up and do something, do everything you can to make that happen. Be you no matter what. Think for yourself, be honest, and do your due diligence before you act. Do what you think is right, even if you're afraid, because if you do that enough times, you will no longer be afraid. Do everything out of love. Cultivate being a positive, hopeful present. Be grateful. Show respect for people you disagree with or don't like. Try and communicate with them. Learn from them. Know that everything that you do affects everything and everybody, even though you don't see it. If you slip up, forgive yourself and redouble your efforts. Make time for fun. And 
If you are a young activist, you take my love and respect with you. Thank you so much, Christina. I really appreciate your time. It's been delightful talking with you.